Hey, on this episode of Restoring Christine, we repair the we repair the passenger side window sill. We did the driver side last time, but now we got the passenger side done, and this one is deuce approved. That's right. So if you're interested in seeing how this gets done, stay tuned. That's a good boy. <laughs> Let's go. Who's a good boy? Deuce is a good boy. That's a bad boy. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Restoring Christine, where we're restoring our 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air. And this is going to probably be the very last episode that we do on metal repair. I'm so looking forward to getting this done. This has just been a long journey, it's been a lot of rust. We had to replace the floor pan, the trunk pan, repair the A pillar on both sides, the C pillar on both sides, the package tray, the rear quarter panels, the front quarter panels, the rear sail panel, everything. It's just been a mess. It's been an absolute, absolute, absolute mess for rust and corrosion, but this will be almost, I wanna see the last one. <laughs> I think it will be. So last week we repaired the, pa the driver's side uh, windowsill and so the last thing we got to do is gonna be the passenger side windowsill so I've already tackled this once I'll just show you quickly what we're gonna do and then I'm gonna dive into it and we're just gonna show you how to just go from soup to nuts on this one and get it done so let's go so what I know from repairing the previous one is that this stainless trim just needs to ride flat on it that's it so this needs to just sit in here set on that it needs to clip over it and that's it. What I also know, and you can see it from the stainless, that's straight as an arrow. So this needs to be straight as an arrow. You can see it kind of like it, it curves, it sweeps in, it sweeps in towards the inside of the car, it pinches the window. So I think what that's from, that's from somebody welding a patch here, welding a patch here, welding a patch up there, and they kind of let this thing get out of shape. So what I'm gonna do is when I cut off this top flange, I'm gonna make it with the new top flange, side flange, and I'm gonna push this out a little bit so that when I weld along this seam, we're gonna be welding right along this bead. When I weld along that bead, it's going to be straight once again, and then when I relieve whatever restraint I put on it, it's not gonna to wanna to spring back here, it's gonna to wanna to stay straight. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's look at the repair that we did on the driver's side. So now this was replaced along, same exact thing. So it's got a top flange replaced all the way from, from here to here. And it's got the inside flange, let's see if we can see that. The inside flange along the same way. So the inside flange is all along that same line. And again, if you can get take a, take a ride on a straight line, there it is. So now we've got a good gap with a window coming through the stainless steel rod's good on this. So this is what we need to replicate. That other side is should be a lot easier. Now I think you can see, if I can zoom in, you can see the, the way it looks from this distance. You can see all the corrosion. Every one of those slots, not a single one of them matters because the stainless hides it. And the felt, the window felt screws in. It screws in from the uh, inside to the out so you just need a surface with a window felt to go through and through the stainless and through into the body and it'll hold true and that's it so that's what we're going to do this week let's go okay we've got the piece out now you can see, this time when I got it out, there's another backing plate that's in there for stiffness, I guess. And uh, I didn't put this on the other side. I don't know uh, what purpose this, this second plate is, but it's definitely separate. I don't know what purpose it serves, and when I did the driver's side, I couldn't see 
what this looked like. The other one was in pieces. It was There was nothing left to it. This one is pretty complete. So what I might do, I don't know, I might, I might repair it. I don't know, I might, I don't know what purpose it serves. I know it just rattles around. So, I, I don't know, I just gotta give that a little bit of thought. I'm doing with that on the driver's side. I don't think I need to overcomplicate it and try to figure out how to put this in. And it's got a lot of cancer. And I can't see what it does other than maybe stiffening up this this um, this window. And if I wanted to stiffen it, there's another way to do it, you know. So I'm going to proceed without it. Okay, so I cut a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal, and to do that, I used a Harbor Freight Bauer brand. Um, I don't know. This is maybe 39. $40 maybe, something like that for this year. It might even be less than that, I don't know. But it works great, it does a good job. I like it better than fighting with the tin snips and I don't have a big shear, you know, so. And also my metal brake that I'm using is something that I made out of scrap metal that I had. It's a channel and a couple pieces of angle and um, I, I just made this up. It's not that great, but it, it's worked for everything I've needed to do on this car for this build. So uh, it took me about a half a day to make it and and it's worked. You know, so I think it's a lot more durable than what you can buy at Harbor Freight. <clears throat> There's not a whole lot to these. There's a ton of videos on the internet to show you uh, how to how to build these and uh, probably make it better than what I did. But um, what I need to do is I just need it. I've just cut it uh, um, an inch and a half wide, and I'm going to bend it in half because this is going to be the the majority of that piece. So I'm going to put it in my brake, and my brake sometimes doesn't do a good job of giving me a crisp line so what I sometimes have to do is take this over to my vise and I pinch it in my vise and I slowly walk it uh, in the vise with a hammer and as I do that it it crispens up this line but you run the risk when you do that you run the risk of, of, uh, of bending a sweep into it so you've got to be careful about about that so Anyway, here we are. We're about ready to bend this, and let's see if uh, if we can get it done. It still looks a little loose. Great. And this this. Looks... There we go. Okay, so just a 90 degree bend in it, and let's see if it works. I keep waiting for this thing to break. It's like you can see it flexing. This angle is flexing pretty pretty strongly, so it's trying. See if it gets it. It's struggling. Looks like I got an interference. There we go. All right, just as I said, as I bent it, it didn't put a crisp line in it, so I had to bring it over to my vise, and you could see I had to crisp in that line, but you can see it's straight as an arrow now. It took a lot to get. It took a lot to get that. It took a lot of persuasion on my on my vise there. It took about five minutes to straighten it out because it had it had a little bit of a sweep in it but now we're ready to start fabricating our piece all right so there's a the piece put it on i've got a line right here that i need to hit so that's going to go here and then where does it line up up there well just let me to line up the gun sights and get it to go from that point right there to that point right there and I'll put a straight edge in the back to make sure we got it. But you see that straight part, it's straight flat until it gets to this curve. So I'm gonna tack it and then where that curve starts, that's where I'm gonna end it and I'm gonna make this curve piece separately. So we're gonna make that without bending it, I'm gonna weld two pieces together to make that. First piece tacked in. I got a number of tacks here. It's a little wide this way. That's okay. I'm gonna grind it down um, and we'll shape that in. I'm gonna have to cut it here and then start making this piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and grind this up before I commit too much to it, and then we'll start making this piece. Let's do that.
finished welding it, give you a quick look at it. Well, actually, I finished welding it a few minutes ago because it's a little bit cool to the touch. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a hole here, a little bit here, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this, and uh, this, this piece will be repaired all the way to here, and then we'll make this piece. So, uh, yeah, it's looking, it's looking good. Simple. It's nothing to it. You know, figuring out how to weld. So that's, that's, that's the biggest part. So I'm using a Hobart Handler 125. It's a 110 volt machine, 120 volt. Um, it just, it, you plug it into a 15 amp socket and I'm telling you, I've run this thing 15 amp socket uh, receptacle with a 50 foot cord and it doesn't, it doesn't draw any load. So, um, you know, it's not challenged. It's just very little amperage that, that you're using when you weld in this little, this little MIG. So it's just little short bursts. I've got it on like um, voltage of three and a, and a wire speed of 80. So I'm moving it pretty fast. But this, I had a bit of an overlap. I left the top come over a little bit. So I had good meat to weld in here. And it, blowing through this was not gonna be that, um, it was gonna be difficult to do. So it was, it was not gonna be very easy to blow through it. So I was able to weld all that and that's it. So just basic 110 volt, 300, $350 machine. Alright, I grinded it smooth, but you saw I touched up a couple of spots. I had a little hole here, and then I had a piece, a section here where I didn't, I didn't get good enough penetration on the top, on the repair plate, and then I, I felt like I needed a little bit more over here. So I got that welded and grinded, and now let's go ahead and move on to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip, and I'm going to tack weld the strip here, and I'm going to get that back edge straight and uh, that's going to stick up long. I'm going to tack weld that. I'll pull that off the car, weld it, grind it, bring it back, weld it in place, and then we'll hit all of this with a flap disc when we're done. That's it. Okay, so I cut a piece three quarters of an inch wide, and I just bent it with my hands to, to, to get this shape. It's not much. It's real easy. You know, this is flimsy metal. So I'm going to tack weld this in place, but we're going to do this in real time. So instead of going hyperlapse and um, doing everything at breakneck speed on the camera, we're going to show you real time what it's going to take here. So again, I'm using, well, I might not have said it yet. Um, I'm using 0.023 wire. It's not flux core. I'm using um, a MIG, so I'm using shielding gas. This side, it's kind of bent a little funny. So, a little long with my gap there, but I'm all right with that. I'll be able to close it. A little bit strong there, went, went through it a little bit. Tip this down or tip this up a little bit. I think I need to tip this up a little bit. I think I bent it when I was trying to get the end piece off. So let me do that. Get that lined up. But they, these look, these are just this is just here to tack to hold this in place temporarily until I get that back flange on there. Alright, I just took a hammer and, and pried this up a little bit with the claw and then and, and bent this this way a little bit because it it, it it dove over. So now what I need to do is I need to get this line straight because it's a little bit wonky. So I'm going to grind this flat and then I'll put my flat plate in the back of it. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, so that's now a straight edge on the back side. So 
what I need to do is I need to go cut a piece of metal, roughly, that I'll just set on the back, tack weld it, and then we can pull this off and fully weld it. Let me do that. Okay, I cut my piece to length. Cut my piece to length, and it's ready to go in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld it onto the back side of this, and we're going to do this in real time. Let me put this way. Fits a little better. Yeah, there you go. So I'm going to tack weld this in real time. tight as I go. It looks like it might have dropped a little bit right there. Let's see. Yeah, that's close. It'll work. That'll work. side tight. And that's it. That's all going to hold it in place. Now I need to take the grinder, grind these little tacks off, pull that piece off and weld it around. So there's Deuce. He was a star of the last video, apparently. A lot of people like seeing him in that video, huh, buddy? He's just sunning himself. He's four. That many. <laughs> He's four years old. And uh, he was a rescue. In fact, his mama was rescued. She was pregnant. And the lady that rescued uh, them with the, um, at the, uh, the groomer that took him in, it was at a kill shelter, took the mother in, the mother was pregnant with about five or six puppies and he was one of the puppies so we took him when he was six weeks eight weeks something like that and he's been a good dog a deuce that's a good boy <laughs> go back to sleep yeah <laughs> all right i've got the piece back by the car Fit in nicely like that. I have to tune it as I get uh, start welding it in, but I'll go ahead and do that. But let's go ahead and weld it up. We're done. There it is. Done. Looks really good. I'm very pleased with it. Straight, tight. It's clean. 
It's really clean. Look at that. I mean, that's that's about as good as you can hope for. And the best part about it is it lives under a piece of stainless. So no one, no one's ever going to see it. Let's see. Put that in. Oh, man. Look at that. That is just riding exactly where it needs to. <laughs> Ooh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> man, that's going to do it. <laughs> You're going to get it on a genuine high note. I'm not making this smile up. That was pretty cool. So, all right. I honestly think that's it for the metal work, man. I've got, I'll probably spend a day doing punch list items. I've got a few more, like some spot wells to, to catch up on, a few little pieces I might need to grind down a little bit more, a few little wells I might need to, need to doctor. But nothing, nothing major. I don't have anything left major to do to repair rust. Now, I started this, gee whiz, starting with rust, what, in July? of uh, 2021 so now we're April of 2022 so how many months that is that's a new floor pan trunk pan uh, both a pillars at the top and the bottom uh, both C pillars um, at the top and the bottom the uh, both doors the bottom of both doors inside skin outside skin uh, fender quarter panels both of them uh, the trunk lid geez I mean how do you think I got to 42 episodes or whatever the heck I'm up to right now so there's a lot out there if you haven't been keeping up with this there's a lot out there to catch up on for the metal work but we're going to have maybe another week to do some punch list items and then i'm throwing body filler on it let's go <laughs> so that's going to do it for this one I tell you what i appreciate everybody that spends time with me in the garage i do appreciate all the subscribers if you're liking the videos give me a thumbs up and if you're liking the channel please give me a subscription so that's going to do it for now take care of yourself cheers Thank <laughs> you.